Hello and welcome to the Simply Free Little Talk. I thank you so much for tuning in tonight. As you know, we have a special show tonight so we can wrap it up and talk about the weekend that was amazing with our youth from the from Galveston Ball to Kansas City Hall. Our town, hometown hero in Galveston, Texas is Kimball Anders, number 38 of the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs has inducted him into their Hall of Fame 2022. As you know, they only select one person a year, and Mr. Kimball Anders was their selection. So we're celebrating, and we're so excited here in Galveston. So we have a few people in the in our studio today that's going to talk to you about our wonderful experience this past weekend. So thanks again for tuning in to the Simply Free Little Talk. I'm your host, Free Little. Let me bring in Mr. Kimball Anders. Hello, Mr. Anders. How are you tonight? Going well. How about yourself, eh? Great, great, great. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad that you can share some information um, with our listening audience about what happened this weekend. What was going on with the youth? That was great, man. It was uh, being back in my community in Galveston. It was a blessing for me to be able to partake in that. And the kids showed up, and the, my my classmates and Galveston. You know, I was really pleased with everything, and I, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I knew we had a, a good opportunity to do something very special. Uh, it made me feel like, like you know, truly one. It made me feel like I had a lot of support, and that was the most important thing. And then one of the other things I, I noticed that with the kids in the community, I was so happy that they were so excited to be part of something, and they showed it, they expressed it, and they, you know, enjoyed themselves at Rock Cooney Park, and all um, and I can't thank you guys enough for all the people that participated for the, the volunteers we had for you know the cook pepper all the food we prepared and stuff to make it a special event and uh, I enjoyed it. It, it the whole weekend was just amazing it was a great celebration and it's a good start for kicking off my foundation yes and speaking of your foundation what is the name of your foundation sir uh, running run back giving back all right running back giving back and so this is going to be an annual event where the kids will come together for poetry and illustration yes we'll make it an annual event um and we're going to do it pretty much the same time you know by being blessed to uh the councilwoman uh lewis and the mayor coming and giving me a proclamation mm -hmm. we're going to try to do it close to october the 15th as much as possible and got to rotate around a little bit we're going to make it happen where we're going to keep that Kimball Andrews Day alive and it'll give yeah. opportunity. Uh, you know, man, that's that's amazing within itself to be honored Absolutely. by in Galveston. Um, and that's that's really important to me because, you know, growing up as a kid in Galveston, you could have went any direction. So I was uh, mm -hmm. proud that I stayed on the right path and made it, being able to make an impact and right now give back to my community and be a part of the, 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 the blessings that that community gave me. Yes, that is amazing. And so your heart is really for the youth. And so we went all out, Team 38. Team 38 is compiled, compiled, compiled of so many different entities and agencies and representation of Galveston, the facets of Galveston, the many facets of Galveston, uh, from Mayor Craig Brown and his wife coming on you know, coming there to, um, to present to you, as you said, and Councilwoman Sharon Lewis, who's having to be here. So we're going to let her come in so she can share a little bit more of how that presentation had gone for you on Saturday. Let's get her in here. Miss Sharon Lewis, how are you? Hey, I am great. How's everyone? We are great. wonderful. Wow. <laughs> Well, Saturday was just just a very humbling, uh, I guess you would say, event. Um, Mr. Anders uh, being honored that day was just uh, was just an honor for me to be there. And I know the mayor and his wife was were just elated. And not only that, the program was just so awesome. Everything started on time, smooth, and it went so smoothly. It was just amazing. And what 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 was most amazing were the kids. Yes. They were attentive. They sat over on those bleachers and they were attentive. And when it came time to participate, they moved to their spots and they did their <laughs> job and they were anxiously awaiting to hear who was the winner. 
And I remember this, this one little girl said, I think they picked minds up. I think they picked minds up. <laughs> so and when you see that kind of excitement in kids, that 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 lets you know that you have made a difference. And yes. not only that, but I love the idea, um, Mr. Anders, that you plan to take it to a level higher than mm -hmm. that, connecting those fine arts, which is awesome, and reading. And, and and today it's 2022, but illiteracy is just rampant within our community. And I just love the fact that you are there. You want to give back and you're giving back and you're planning it on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. That 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 is awesome. And you're such an humbling young man, always have been. And uh, I told you I went through my kids' cards and I really <laughs> did. So I did get the yeah. autograph. Got them autographs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh and they have a whole stack of cards but uh -huh. it was just a pleasure to be there everything decoration the the gym was just i mean just i couldn't believe beautiful red gold um the kids and i think that might have been calming for the kids because it was different it wasn't like the gym but it was dressed up mm -hmm. and uh I, I i thought that was just just awesome there um kudos to everyone the decorators those who like you said the food and everybody it just it was just awesome a great event a great event yes thank you so much raw touch was our decorator and that is Ms. Teresa Williams and I want to bring in our MC now because he did a fantastic job of following and thank you for the compliment of the flow but we all have to owe that to Mr. MC himself, media <laughs> personality, <laughs> Coach Otis Brown. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank yeah. you all. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Simply Free Little Talk. Share with us your experience as an MC. Well, it was a um, a very humbling experience, and um, I didn't get to know. I, I didn't know everything that I was doing until the day of. So I was kind of going on the whim. I kept reading over the script of everything that I would have to pronounce and who I would have to introduce. <laughs> and to be able to do that for Mr. Kimball Anders, um, my uncle, I mean, that, that was just a joy within itself because you have a guy that's going into the Hall of Fame. Me growing up, watching him through high school, through college, on to the NFL, now going in um, to the Kansas City Chiefs Hall of Fame, which we're pushing for him to get into the NFL Hall of Fame as as well. It was just it was just an honor for me, and for me and for my mm -hmm. uncle to ask me to be able to be the one to host this event when he could have asked anybody mm -hmm. to do that. It, I mean, it was just a great experience for me because no matter what, I'm still going to be a part of his history with that in Galveston. And um, it was just it was just an honor in itself, and I, I was really happy that and excited that he asked me to do that. Wow, that's amazing! And I appreciate you did a phenomenal job, as I stated before. It was excellence from the beginning to the end, and you followed through. And Mr. Anders, what is your perception? Oh, what, what did uh, you see? Uh, with MC, oh, oh, MC Otis <laughs> Charles did a great job. Yeah, yes. like you said, we had to put some Tony. stuff toward the end. Got the itinerary all packed down, and um, but you know, just the opportunity of doing something for the first time, I think it went really well. You know, and that's now those are the lessons we learned, and obviously, you know, we'll have our first meeting probably next week and, yeah. and try to move forward and get ready for you know the next year. So, those are good lessons to learn. It's always uh, room for improvement in everything you do. So, look forward to you know moving forward, and, and we know what we face with now. So. Yes, and we are really appreciative of Ms. Sharon Lewis being um, in the council position, the seat to help us as far as the city to get the awareness out and just kind of guide us. So we appreciate your input in that area. Yes, ma'am. Very well. Yes, we thank everyone that was a part of the Team 38. Now we're going to bring the chef responsible for the good food that we got to eat. <laughs> chef or RD? No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> That's you know, you know, I'm a little shy and think that, but I, it, it was, it was a pleasure and honor to do something for my brother that was from day one. I can remember when we was walking before graduation, before we get into our senior year, we uh we talked about what we wanted to be in life, 
And he mentioned one thing. I mentioned five, of course, but he mentioned <laughs> the thing he wanted to be in the NFL. And I mentioned five things. My last thing was to be a merchant seaman. And we both hmm. made our dream come true. Yes. And wow. I remember the day that we took that ride to Kansas City to, uh, to go there when he got picked up and everything else. I remember the first bubblegum card check that he got. So to him to go into the Hall of Fame now and watch from where he came from mm -hmm. to now, it's a beautiful thing and it's an honor to be his mm -hmm. Finally, he acknowledged I'm his best friend. <laughs> Fuck behind. <laughs> you know, that is too but, funny. But it, you know, I, I get nervous when when I'm got when, going ahead of me now as far as opening up a restaurant and everything else. And it's something that people been telling me to do all my life. Something that been instilled with me that that all my family has done was cook and people come enjoy. I never put a price tag and everything else. So when I actually first did it i was real nervous you know like right now i'm talking about it nervous and then knowing that the place that i'm going in is sentimental because my uncle had been in that in that place for yes. almost 32 years and then my grandmother had the restaurant way back in the 50s and everything else so that to fast forward that the dream coming true into that right. and then about this weekend i knew it was a blessing when we did the dry run when we took the picture when me and him in front of his thing mm -hmm. and the little kid stood beside us and smiled and he would not get out of that picture. So that let me know then right then there was something beautiful. They would number card that had everything going, that it was gonna be a wonder. Even though y'all was getting fussed at, but that let me know right then and there. <laughs> now y'all behind me nervous. Like I had to cheat a bit because I was rushing pressing for time to make sure I got the food there on time because he told me almost like two hours ahead, oh, this is the time the food need to be there. This is the time the food need to be served. I said, man, this man got me pressing to the gum now. But everything <laughs> worked out fine. I'm happy. It's a beautiful thing. Love you, bruh. We're on our way. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. I want to go back to Miss Sharon Lewis. Uh, just you observing, not just being a guest, but also supporting what Mr. Kimball Anders is doing for the community. What does it do for you as a congressman lady in the city of Galveston, Texas? What is that doing for you? As a council member, it mm -hmm. makes me super, super proud. You know, we, we um, he grew up in the community and I grew up in the same community. And I tell you, I loved walking to my elementary school. I loved my central middle school. And I actually wanted to go to central as a high school. So the community that he shared, it's, in, it's embedded in him. It's rooted in him. The people who helped him raise him, the, it's, it's there, it's there. So it makes me very proud to be the city council rep for the area and to know that he continues building a relationship with our youth and with adults as well. And that is just critically important that we don't forget where we came from. Awesome, I love it. Yes, yes. Mr. Kimball Anders, we know you as Cooney. We know you as humble. And a little still shy, y'all. He, he is very humble. But, you know, unless, <laughs> yeah, unless you know him, then you're not going to get a, a real conversation. You get a few words here and there. But how were you, how was your heart that day? I saw you smiling bright. You always have a, a smile. But you're smiling bright and kids were pulling on you. And you were so patient with all of them. Did that take you back to your childhood? Yes. Um, like I say, for me, it, it's really been, a, it's been a long time. For you. It's been about the kids. It's, it never was about me, but I I love the opportunity to have a chance to, to show kids some things that I've been through in life and just share my experience with them and be able to put them in a position, like I said. And, you know, growing up at a young age, I didn't realize how much education was important. But obviously, over the years and once I got to a certain point in my life, it is one of the most important things in life. And we missed out on a lot of opportunity growing up. But in our generation, in the 70s, we had the people in our community that made sure we did the right thing. You know what I mean? And I was one of those kids where, you know, we caught the whoopings on the way from school. If you got in trouble, you're going to get in trouble. But I hope everybody in the community. So um, just being, and that's the biggest thing, being born and raised in Galveston is something totally different. It's something you can't explain across the country because, I know a lot of football players have come from there and it, yes. they're not in track. And anytime they talk about Galveston, it's just something that's different from Galveston, from everybody else in the world. 
And like I said, for us in our generation growing up, it was just that community that kept us together. Like, you know, it was just, I mean, even back from the jungle to the chapel, I'm mean, actually playing at the chapel. Mm -hmm. and the streets was packed every day, you know, Sundays at, at, at on the beach. And it was just a lot of fun. But again, we learned a lot about life lessons and, you know, growing up working at the Boys and Girls Club. And I always worked at, I didn't work at Rocky Mountain Park, but I was there pretty much every day. We was, we was outsiders. We didn't, we didn't stay in and play the video games. We had to stay outside all day until the street lights come on. Come in, <laughs> That's it. The street the street light came on. on. So uh, just to, just to, man, it's just to see a kid just smile and enjoy themselves and have that fun because, again, you never know what people's going through in life. And I know right now we deal with a lot of mental illness uh, things so that's that's one of the things that i'm looking forward to as well is just trying to help ease some of the ease or be able to work with those type of people and be able to connect and, and try to you know seek help and stuff like that and you know our community i know growing up our parents weren't too 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 honed on going to doctors and stuff like that like i said if i get a split on my finger or cut i'm going to the paper cut i'm going to the doctor I get all my checkups and I get my code. Now I do everything I need to do. I'm not ashamed to go to the doctor. So, but uh, just educate, just educate them. You know what I mean? Just giving them opportunity to to do something that 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 you know know something that we haven't been taught. You know, so we want to provide that. And, you know, we're gonna start the financial literacy program uh, because mm -hmm. me growing up, we wasn't educated on that. We had we know how to add and subtract, but for us, like. You know, open up a bank account, civil bank account, and stuff like yeah. that. So just take it step by step. So I'm looking forward to doing the work uh, that I believe that's needed in the area. So you saw the need, and you're meeting that need, and you want to make sure that even our kids are cultivated in art and in in poetry. Yeah, art, poetry, educational. I mean, like I say, financial literacy. Uh, just getting a, a mindset of you know. And right now we we have so much so many opportunities now to be you know presidents and all the things that's come to fruition that at one time we couldn't do so i think now is, is just the time to, to push forward and, and make things happen that where we own our own businesses and we're doing our own things that nature so uh, and teaching those skill sets as well absolutely and that is a great thing so otis you are a coach and also in education so you did a wonderful interview and presentation sports wise on the stats and just the journey of Mr. Kimball's 10 year season with the Kansas City Chiefs. Can you elaborate on that for us? Well, with his stats, because I was with a majority of the time throughout the way and just researching the things that he did, because a lot of stuff he did in college, I did not know he did. I just knew he was a good athlete and stuff like that. But researching some of the stats from when he played at U of H. And then when I interviewed him and was going over some of the stats, I mean, he was, he was wild by mm -hmm. like, dude, you was one of the top punt returners <laughs> in the nation during the time when Deion Sanders was the number one punt returner in the nation. And then it always baffled me. And I say this all the time, as I did when I was introducing him for to be a running back and have mm -hmm. more stats as a receiver who do that. <laughs> when you're carrying the ball majority of the time, but you got more stats as a receiver mm -hmm. than you do as a running back. So I think the kids needed to know that. A lot of people in social media needed to know that because what I did was when I was researching before I, I interviewed them and my uncle, I always know when I'll be like, hey, I want to do this. He'd be like, oh, Lord, here we go. What he's going to say, <laughs> what he's going to ask. But I had to really research what I wanted to ask him because mm -hmm. every interview I saw, it was all about the football how great he is, what he done. But I wanted people to know about his life, like where he from, how he was raised, you know, the things that he didn't have. You know, when we was at the at the event when you was talking about the pants and the shoes, a lot of people didn't know when he started playing ball, he would buy two of everything. Because like he said, when he was young, he, he wasn't able to have those things. He had to share those things. So I think people needed to hear that and know that, not just the Kimball Anders, who was a successful athlete, who's going into the Hall of Fame, the three-time Pro Bowler, but him as a person. Yes, the person who is humble, the person who gives back and who has not forgotten his past. 
Mm-hmm. And he have, and you know, another thing I like to elaborate on years ago, I've been with him since 1995, you know, 27 years. And I got, I have the jacket on. He probably ain't noticed this, but he first started his first company, which yeah. was the Sports Marketing Group. And um, I was over his public relations. So five years after that, he came, I thought he was firing me, but he was like, nephew, you don't always have to be under my umbrella. You smart enough. You, you like working with kids. You like sports. You can start your own business. And here we go. 20 some years later, I have my own business. I am working with kids. I'm interviewing the underprivileged athletes who's not getting nationally recruited. But it was all because off the word of him when I thought I was getting fired. <laughs> that is awesome. That's awesome. That's great. So how has Kimball inspired you? Well, As he's inspired me in, in, Yeah, in, in a lot of ways. You know, I, I coached on them like he gave me a job for his own company. I coached on them for years. He was telling me to go back and get my degree, go back and de- get my degree, because I felt like I was a, a hypocrite because I was getting all these kids in school, mm-hmm. but I didn't even have my own degree. So mm-hmm. outside of him and Uncle Pepper and my wife, they was like, especially my wife, she just woke up one day and said, hey, you enrolled in school and I'm going to start <laughs> dropping you off to go to school because she knew. If I if, if I would have drove myself, I probably would have detoured and, and went somewhere else. But just from him telling me that and then him getting his degrees and stuff like that. And like with a lot of these kids, like you saying, the kids in the inner city, when I was growing up, I didn't want to be like the professional players that I saw on television. I wanted to be like the people that I saw every day or when he came home. So that that was the difference with me. I didn't want to be like a, a, a Walter Payton. You know, I wish I had the skills like him. But I wanted to emulate my uncle. That's why I wore his number in high school. I wanted to emulate my other uncle because they played together. So I couldn't have both of their numbers. So when I got in college, I was number 82, 84. If you just double it up. So they was the inspiration for me. And then especially with education, you know, he always preached, even when we was coaching in high school together, that it's going to come a time that you ain't going to better play football no more. And I'm a prime example of it. He was talking about himself. And to hear him talk like that coming from being a professional athlete, I think the kids needed to hear that. So that was my inspiration coming from from him. Mm. Helper, the inspiration that your best friend has (laughs) (laughs) but how has he truly inspired you as a brother as a man as a man i I watched my brother and i can say my brother i watched him go (laughs) being down to to now and we had we had this thing as a team we call big we little i so it's always been big we never i we always have pulled each other together no matter what and i can remember when he got cut from pittsburgh yep. i was working split shift right. out, and he was he was out of there you know he was on because his mind hey i'm going into the league i'm gonna get drafted this and everything else and i get off of my split ship and i go by the house hey man anybody call yet and he was just laying there i said hey man one of us got to make it come on we got to get about it here <laughs> i end up going for me i don't go to no library now i went there one no lazy reason i went to the library found the book the that all the players that didn't get drafted, they end up going into the Hall of Fame. So I showed him the book and everything else. And sure. we out. I was getting off my split ship every night. We running down the beach, going on the sand, doing our thing and everything else. So it was a blessing from day one, me working with him now. And he still had that drive where he worked out today like he's still playing in the league. Yeah. And they get on me. Him and my nephew both get on my behind. And I fall back. And I fell back to six months now because... <laughs> Do my workout. <laughs> you have us all laughing right now. Yeah, it's all it's always you know kids call us uh, Claude and Ray, and that that could have been the best <laughs> nickname they gave us because I think I'm the only one getting proud. Only you, Pepper. You know, you know everybody else see them that quiet person, and everything else until you see us two around, and then you'll see him get out his element with me. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the truth. Uh, I, I have always been the person behind me no matter when i'm on my downs out he's always been there for me you know and i try to do the same thing for him it's nothing that he can ask me i won't do sure. and he know he know that without a doubt you know i get mad and i might fuss <laughs> what i would do <laughs> and the middle man our nephew he's the he always initiate the uh the best and everything else he always calls me. <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. But, but, yeah. But, he, but it's good for you, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I love to see your interaction and I love how you have also brought um, Otis up in the way that he's been brought up to um, follow the lead and inspire him as well. And he's also an educator. But I want to go to Sharon Lewis. You are an educator. How does that make you look at this former um, NFL player now being acknowledged by his team that he was with for 10 years, but his drive, his desire is education for the youth in his own hometown. Right. And I think, again, those seeds were planted within his home. When I look at his family, it's the same thing. It's, 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 it's education. And as I hear these young men, I remember first talking to Pepper and he was like, that's my best friend. He's my that's best right. friend. <laughs> he let me know right then, Kimball yes. Ann, that's his best friend. That's his best friend. But, yeah, I mean, and the nephew here. Here, These are two excellent examples of the influence that um, Kimball has had here in his family and in his friends, and that's critically important. And sometimes we don't know how we will influence people. And so now we have a business owner here in the community. We have a, a who's going to cook us some good food, make sure yes, that we, we, will. we get down there and support it and eat it and gain more weight. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And we have uh, the, uh, his nephew who's, who's in business with kids. And uh, yeah. the idea that he never thought he would do it, but Kimball pushed him, positioned him mm -hmm. to do it. He didn't. He, he right. thought he was putting him out the way, but he just positioned him to to move on. So it's it, it's just awesome to see mm -hmm. our and I, and I have to say this, having three sons, yeah, black men make it. And in our community, mm -hmm. not only that, but they give back and they share yeah. and they have a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's a rarity today. And that's very yeah. needed. And they care. And they deeply care, care. Mm -hmm. deeply care. So I see, I see Kimball as, as, as wanting to educate, make sure that, that kids get mm -hmm. maybe what he didn't get. And That's at the it. same time, yeah. And at the same time to uh, infiltrate their, their minds and their hearts, if they see kindness in him, then you can't help but be that way when you grow up and give back. So it's just again it's just an honor and being an educator we love that we love we always we used to always be looking for people to come to school and to share you know to tell kids that you can do and you don't have to be this professional player but you just be what your gifts are you take a chance on who you can be and um for us to see commentators uh, that that's just great because some kids are afraid they don't like to speak, they don't like to talk uh, because it has not been. <laughs> so that's me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is just an honor to be here and to see you all, Kimball the most, but uh, also your nephew and his bestest friend. <laughs> bestest, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> For you, I love them too. I love them all. I love all of you guys on the panel and, and have a special bond with each one of you. But I want to move to seeing Kimball's excitement when those kids came in and how they were just so happy about their prizes when you gave them. And those kids were so talented. Yeah. How did that affect you, Mr. Anders, when you saw all those beautiful, hard work in 45 minutes? Those yeah, I, I, I was walking around looking at some of the pictures. I said, it's going to be tough. They, <laughs> yeah. they, were, they were excited. And that's like, again, once you see that in somebody, yeah. you can't help but, you know, have a good yeah. feeling about everything. So at the end of the day, I knew that was, that was it for me. And I was, yeah. I was joyed to see them happy. And they, they was engaged. They was open and they talked and they mingled with me, priests, homes. They mingled with the adults in the proper manner. Um, it was just, it was fun to watch. I will say that. And then, like I say, just to see the type of work they've done. Matter of fact, I bought, it was some people, some of the kids wanted me to have them. That was, that was really important to me. I'm like, you sure? Cause I said, yeah, I could take them home. He said, no, I'm going for you. And there's one little girl, when I was watching her draw it, and then I didn't realize it, but she put 
on here, and this is like I say, the kids they don't know they some of them probably never seen me before in their life. And she said, "From from Donna, love you on that." You know what I mean? So kids are so that's, that's important. You know what I mean? That's a heart. And for some kids that probably seen me for the first time, just to share that with you. You know what I mean? It's just yes. it's, it's great. It means I mean she's a good little girl. I sit up and talk to her for a little while, and just gotta and again get an opportunity to know them. Cause I got to give them a little something they didn't know me, so I couldn't just be back there. Cause I'm I'm not shy with kids. That's the only <laughs> not thing. Not at all. He was, they was all around. I, I mess with the kids, but I'm around adults, so I'm shy. So <laughs> come down to the kids, I'm, I'm all in. Cause I know how to talk to them. So, <laughs> but uh, I enjoy I so enjoy good. being around kids. Man. I I tell you like true story. Back in the days when we were working, like most kids, so they too. This kid is too bad. You can't do this to them. You can't do that. I always felt that give me the baddest kids on the block and we could change. And, and it. I've seen that happen time and time again. There's no kid too bad. You got to find a way to get to them. That's it. I mean, you just got to find a way to reach them. You got to kind of go where they is. You know what I mean? So that's the that's what I really truly get out of out of for the last thirty or so years I've been in education and my foundation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, truth be told, like even in growing up, you know. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club, and I used to work there as a child. I'd rather have all those kids any day of the week. So, any day so it's just it's good. a blessing, you know, to see those kids just enjoy themselves. And, and again, I think presenting the kind of the setup, which you say, Teresa done a great job. I was thoroughly impressed the yes. way it was. Raw touch. Was, <laughs> so, I'm not going to go there, but, you know, it wasn't going to be like that initially. It was like, okay, we're just doing an event. I'm just going to throw it yeah. together. She said, nope, nope, we're not going to do right. that. And she she took it to the next level. That's so right. the kids got to see some next level things. And that was mm -hmm. very impressive to a lot of people. So I think uh, we can't go down from there. It got to get better. Not at all. Year. We're going up. <laughs> <laughs> we set a present of excellence. We got to continue that. So, and, and the kids were very pleased. Some kids had never had that opportunity to sit at a table setting like that. And so that was impressive to them. And then even the layout for the art and the poetry. So that was beautiful. So kudos to Team 38. It was awesome. Yes, great team. So what I would like to do, you have those, those pictures. I want to just take out everyone for just a second. I'm going to bring you guys back in. I want him to be able to be up close with those those photos. I mean, those, those paintings. So I'm going to take everyone out for just a second so he can show you guys up close. Bring them in. Yeah, you, it's good. Yeah, perfect. Now, is that the one that said love you on the back? Yeah, this the one that got love you in the right That's in corner. Beautiful. She was a second place from yeah. sixth to eighth grade. Yes. This that was is great. Not a good one. Can you see it? There you go. Yeah. That's beautiful. And those kids really this one you got, you got love with a heart on it. Yeah. It was wow. nice. Come back. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. But it was well, so many. Um, it was a hard decision. I'm gonna bring Otis back because he was a judge. I don't know how you guys did. I saw all that artwork just spreading those bleachers. And I was tough. like, man, yeah, it was a tough decision. It's at a beach. Oh no, that was tough. It was a tough decision, like I told him, like, hey. I left it up to the experts uh, <laughs> to do that. <laughs> yes. Well, it was an honor to coordinate, to make sure that we had everything in place and do the checklist of things. And, and I'm going to tell you something. You were great to bring everybody together and see everybody want to do and have the same goals um, to bring it to pass, to bless those youth. And so I'm excited that next year, what did you say? Next year, October. Gotta be better. Do it again. We're gonna do it again. So I'm gonna break old to see it since now we showed off the work. So he showed off about four, three or four. Mm -hmm. How difficult that was because you guys had a full bleach of, of paintings. Well, it, it was very difficult. And what we was looking for, we was looking for creativity, seeing what they was doing and what they was posing for the city of Gauss and then what they was putting inside the paintings that was involving um Mr. Kimball Anders. But but I want everybody to know, even though we did have winners from first through third, all the kids was winners because they all did receive yes. something. 
the class of 85 was there and they made sure and um club 68 the sponsor some of the sponsors and they made sure that every kid did receive something if they did not play so i think everybody won it was just the creativity and the things that the kids put inside the paintings which us as judge myself and two other judges looked at mm -hmm. that decided the winners um of that event but every kid won Mm, I love it. I love everything that you guys was able to do on Saturday. It was a great day. Um, like you said, everyone was a winner when they left there. No one left empty handed. And you also had uh, your picture was autographed that you gave the kids. That was exciting. You kind of tell some stories about what the kids shared with you. Oh, yeah, well, I know some of the kids, um, they was waiting outside for about 30 minutes for to get a card, and yeah. I didn't know they didn't get one, and so I went outside and gave them a card, talked to them for a while. They was, I say, it, it's great to see what somebody get excited about, you know what I mean? It truly, uh, I mean, I mean, that that what makes my heart pump, that makes me feel better about myself. I have a little more confidence in myself <laughs> when others, <laughs> but I know you got genuine feelings coming yeah. from a special child, you know? That wants nothing but the best in receiving. So I'm gonna bring Miss Sharon Lewis and Pepper Jr. in and we can give some words, some nuggets to the people, the audience that listen tonight of what this really meant. And we also are still celebrating November the 6th, Kansas mm -hmm. City, Arrowhead Stadium. I think we've been celebrating for about a whole two months now. <laughs> we have. <laughs> to be told, hey, they tell us celebrate after too because uh, it's, hey, it's, it's much deserved because I know we have a lot of athletes that came from Galveston. I know we have a lot of athletes that's probably been in a college Hall of Fame, but I can't count too many that's been in the NFL Hall of Fame from an NFL team. Get alone in the NFL yeah, yeah. Hall of Fame. The first one. First. Man, Otis for years been telling him that he was going to get into the Hall of Fame. We used to the big with the gold jacket because I sit up and watch it every year and I watch the stack. And I tell you, look here, I'm telling you now, even if I'm here or not, you better mention my name because I've been telling you for <laughs> that you're taking it to that Hall of Fame. <laughs> like, so we, we, won, we won one year. We went one year, we went to. Um, and after Thanksgiving, we went to the game. And so happened, we was on our way to the suite, and it was a big old picture painted on the wall. And now we, we called each other Slap Rock. I got Slap Rock, man, ain't that you? And he thought, man, that ain't me. And I cussed him out. Man, how can you not know it's not you on the This is just, So we took it on ourselves, me and, me and our nephew. We walked all the way around Arrowhead, and he had more pictures on Arrowhead Stadium than any character he played. Wow. Almost target us down. He didn't believe it. I never been up, but I never walked up there, so I don't know. <laughs> he, he he never knew this, and I told him then, man, that should tell your behind now that you're gonna end up going into the Hall of Fame. And me and my nephew, we always check the stats. We are always pre about, man, you going? You just better make sure I'll be the have to be the first one sitting at that in the front. He got conditions with it. But I want to sort of you know, I, my father, we got a track team that's coming up. I'm part of a. Uh, a new track team that's going to be in Galveston. Yes. Yes. Uh, the Galveston vote. And I'm the assistant president, and Coach Mice is going to be the president. You know, he come from a good background from Madison, and then he he loved what Galveston have and what we can able capable of, of producing. And I'm producing. glad that's for that because that's another one of my dreams that I want to give back yeah. is to always have a track team. And my brother is backing me on that and everything else. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you have more kids next year participating yeah. on the. Back to more. Is, it, is, this, is this the first track, uh, Lily track team? Through the, the test of time of the years, they had it, but they never would stand, and it always falls. So we end up always had to go across the water, go to Lamar, to the Jaguars, and everything gets participated because we never had nowhere to practice. Wow. So to have an opportunity to have the kids to practice now, it, that makes a whole lot better. Well, oh, yeah. we, we worked out a good situation with, with yes, Galveston yes. Ball High. So we, we, get, we get the practice on the track. It. We get the practice on the track. We might talk to the AD and it made it happen. And so we got a place to practice. Yes, and, and it'll keep the kids busy from all the way from February to the second week of July. That's how long the track season is. Yes. And when then they get an opportunity to see if they go to the Nationals, they actually do the extra ceremony like it's the Olympics. where Everybody mm -hmm. from Texas 
walk in together with a big tech <laughs> sign on and everything else. And then some of these kids don't have the opportunity. And I mean, when my children was doing it, man, I had to stand on Palmer Highway and on 45 to, to get donations to drive all the way to Sacramento, uh, Sacramento uh, so my kids can run. And this is how long we've been. It was me and late Bobby Bassett was coaching. Coach Eddie Terry, when he was telling you, me and him was coaching and everything else. And one of the little kids ran me away. We got into it. And I said, before I lose my manhood, I had to back away. And I ain't been coaching since then. Oh I'm, I'm excited yeah. that I really didn't have the opportunity because I was always going offshore, coming back home for them to weeks and try to implement track into the kids. And my own kids fired me because they didn't like the way I was coaching. So they ended up going to <laughs> Eddie Terry. So they liked the way they okay. was soft spoken. We did the same track schedule, but he was more soft spoken than I was yeah. spoken because I had that old curvy old coach in me going out with you my way, my way, or you ain't gonna like it whatsoever. <laughs> oh, I got the opportunity to be with the kids and do what I got to do with them now for, for that. So I'm looking forward for that too. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Mr. Kimball Anders, we just want to say thank you, Cooney. From Galveston, you are our hometown hero. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just so happy about what you have achieved. And you're just still that humble person from back in the day, from childhood playing football. And you just still, you never forgot home. So I want to personally thank you for that. And you did not forget those who were there for you. And I appreciate that. So, anyone else want to say anything else? Now, what was that? A uh, slap head or something? <laughs> she wouldn't go back to that. She <laughs> said, <laughs> Slap rock. <laughs> slap rock. <laughs> slap rock. Actually, that's the, the name the class 85 have for each other. Uh, Big Wheelie Out. We'll call each other Slap Rock. You know, somebody do something stupid or say Slap Rock. <laughs> slap Rock. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll say I, do, I will say one last thing. I remember Mr. Prince talking about you. But he always said, he said, that guy's kind of different. <laughs> he, he's wise. I ain't going to tell you what, what he really said. He ain't like the <laughs> we'll just But he different. always expressed and knew that you had talent and that you were going somewhere. And uh, my pastor, Pastor Bain, said to be sure to tell you congratulations. And he's watched you as well in college and in thank NFL. Okay, so, thank you. Kudos, thank you. kudos to you. <laughs> yes. It was a great weekend. A great weekend. Oh, it yeah. was, yeah. 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 Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. It was great. Yeah. It was just great to see everything come together. His vision uh manifest in everything, Absolutely. all the events. So thank you for having a vision and having us all decide to to follow you and to see a great outcome, successful outcome, because the kids were so excited. So yeah. excited. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And they left early hope for next year. Yeah, 1038. So, Miss Anders, we're going to let you close us out with sharing with everyone what to expect for next year. Well, I'm going to say this one, too, because we are going to do something at the Boys and Girls Club. Yes. Um, it's called a turkey bowl, and we're going to have a little more information. So we are going to be kind of looking to get a Lily football team. It's going to be two games. We're going to start practicing in um, – Sometime mid-November, and the kids will play. I guess it, you know, sometime before it's a turkey bowl, so late November or after Thanksgiving, they get an opportunity to play two games. And me, myself, Pepper, and a couple of guys gonna be out there coaching up the young kids, getting them ready for a couple of games. Now I'm looking forward to that because you know, I haven't been coaching in a few years, so I'm pretty <laughs> yeah. excited about that. Uh, and just and, and right now, you know, getting my foundation up and running in Texas. Um, so just trying to really partnership and trying to do some more things in the community and, 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 and just, like I say, just give back. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, you know, teaming up with, uh, you know, a lot of people and make some things happen in our communities and Galveston period. And, you know, this whole Galveston County because, and, you know, <clears throat> this whole area is everybody's worried they'll have an opportunity to do something. So I'm all for everybody. So just want to be able to, to get, do what I can. So I'm looking forward to to really engage, getting get engaged back in the community. I think that's remarkable. Any other one, anyone want to say anything? Because we're just going to close it out by saying thank you for tuning in to Simply Free Little Talk. You heard it yourself from Mr. Kimball Anders, Mr. Otis Brown, and Mr. Pepper Jr., Edward Benjamin. 
who's opening his restaurant. Otis, you have several talk shows. I want you to go ahead and mention those. Yes, please um, give our social media platforms. I'm also a co-host on Black Love and Marriage Our Way. You can find us on YouTube as well as on Instagram and on Facebook. We kind of talk about um, marriage our way, and we give some good nuggets on that show from the things that we go through in the marriage. And we reason why we started that show, because we don't see a lot of shows with people educating people on marriage about the ups and the downs. We always see the good on television shows, but we don't never see the bad. So we give our insight and we let people participate in that. You can also follow um, the upper room is myself and two other guys that are from Galveston, Texas, born and raised in Cleveland West and um, Larry Murphy. And we talk about everything from life concepts to, um, politics to kids to what's going on in in our world in our society in our communities and then last but least my show national scouting um service which you can find on youtube as well as on facebook um i do interview with college athletes high school athletes athletes who is trying to get recruited to help them get on a um, platform for colleges to be able to see them and interact or be able to contact them will when they not able to have that platform to be able to reach out to schools and a lot of these things are because of that guy that's sitting on the panel when i thought he was firing me and he told me i can get from under his umbrella so here i am today i love it yeah you got like a thousand social media uh you know social media yeah. hey hey it keeps me busy and out of trouble that's true that's a good thing that, hey that's you're right I agree. Him and Dominique Brown, they're doing wonderful things. And yes, is it Herbert and Washington. Jessica Washington? Jessica Washington and her, her husband, um, Herb Washington, which we all on the panel, panel of um, Black Love and Marriage. And Jessica and Mr. Um, Herb, they are my cousins through marriage. That's my wife's cousins. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, big shouts out to them as well. All right. Any shout outs, Pepper? You want to say your. I'm just, I'm looking, forward, I'm looking forward to. November, because you know that's my birthday weekend for one. I tried to get out of it because I, you know, me, I told him, hey man, I know you want to take your family, and he cussed me out saying I am family. So he, he made the show up. I'm, I'm really okay. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I can say for uh, we got a event coming up Saturday that uh, all the class of 85, me and a couple of cats been talking years uh, about doing from Lamar, from Hitchcock, from Dickinson, from Texas City, because all of us got along. And so we have an a, a 85 reunion to, you know, get together to talk about what the future hosts and class reunions together and host like uh, events and going against each other competition and everything else. And class 85 always had this one thing, big we lit up and we stand by that. Awesome. Awesome. Sharon Lewis. Um, again, just an honor. Uh, I will not be in uh, the Arrowhead Stadium that weekend, but I will definitely be cheering for you. But I will be in Kansas sometime during the week of the 16th. So I'm going to make sure I go to that stadium and I'm going to walk around and see. <laughs> Take your pictures. pictures <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Again, That's congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank congratulations, Mr. Kimball. We thank you. We're proud of you. We have we all fans here in Galveston. We thank you. We thank God for what you're doing and what you're bringing back to Galveston. So we'll sign off together. Simply Free Little Talk. I'm your host, Free Little. Tune in. You heard it from all of our guests today, the different things that they're doing. But more importantly, we're supporting Mr. Kimball Anders, who is the Kansas City Chief inductee for 20. 22. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. <laughs> hey, where the balloons? <laughs> 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 <laughs>